ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله واصحابه ومن تبعهم باحسان الى يوم الدين فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة أعاذنا الله منها يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اللهم اجعلنا من الفائزين في الدنيا والآخرة اللهم أمين ما دي بذلز إن إسلام There are many reasons that we can never count that we should be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. And inshallah ta'ala, one of the great blessings that we have right now is to be able to come together in the masjid and pray the salah in congregation. And here we are, we are offering Salatul Jum'ah, the best gathering of the week. And here we are in the masjid. Falillahi alhamd. We know the schools are closed. We know many places are closed due to the pandemic. And this is the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And only what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permits is, is what happens and nothing else. My dear brothers, in Islam, I just want to remind you that we need to keep our masajids open. We need to keep our masajids also safe for all of us. So I would kindly ask the brothers, if any one of you has forgotten, for example, the face mask, please make sure that you have one with you right now. Or try and borrow one from the masjid, bin Allah ta'ala, and get one from the masjid. Secondly, if you forgot to put it on, please put it on right now. Jazakumullah khairan, because we have to keep ourselves safe. It's very important that we keep ourselves safe and also we keep our brothers who are sitting next to us and not far from us safe as well. So please do so. This is our responsibility, all of us, inshallah ta'ala, that we keep ourselves safe because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not kill yourselves. So it's very important that we preserve the life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. So this is just a quick and reminder for all of us inshallah ta'ala to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make sure that we follow the guidelines barakallahu feekum just imagine my brothers imagine if you just received a text message from your bank manager a text message just came to you right now and this text message goes like this the text message tells you that one of your accounts with that particular bank, you have a deposit of 79,935,000. And then shortly after that, you get another text message telling you that you have in one of your other accounts, 159,870,000 pounds. And shortly after that, you receive another text telling you that you have 181 million in your other account. And then another message arrives and tells you that you have 815 million. 337,000 in a different account. And then another text message arrived and it tells you you have 344 million, 
998,000. How would you be feeling that time? What would you have felt? How excited would you have become if you have received those texts right now? Those messages that tells that told you all of that. You would have definitely felt so excited. You would have definitely, maybe many of us would have probably died out of happiness because we love money and wealth so much. But subhanAllah, we have accounts that are open and we are able to deposit in those accounts so much wealth, something which is greater than wealth itself. And that's the ajr. I want to just bring to your attention, my brothers, in Islam, if someone prays the five obligatory prayers, that's it. The five obligatory prayers every day, five times a day. Do you know how many rak'at you would have done if you were doing that for 40 years of your life? That would have meant that you have prayed 90 million and 593,000 rak'at. That would have been in your account. Praying only the five daily prayers for 40 years of your life. How many sujood do you think you would have done in that time? Every rak'ah, you do two sujood. That would have meant 181 million sujood during that time. That would have been in your account. How many tasbih do you think you would have done? How many times do you think you would have said Subhana Rabbi al azim or Subhana Rabbi al ala in that salah? It would have become 815 million times and 337,000 times. Just saying Subhana Rabbi al azim Subhana Rabbi al ala in your salah. And this is just the five obligatory prayers. Let me continue. Each time when we pray, the five daily prayers, when we pray, we recite Surah Al-Fatiha, each rak'ah once. And what would have that meant? Whenever you recite Surah Al-Fatiha, what would have happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would deposit into your account 1,000, and 390 reward for reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. And that's if we say Surah Al-Fatiha consists of only 139 letters. And then that times, how many Fatihas you would have read for 40 years just by praying the five daily prayers? That would have come to a total of 344 million times you've read Surah Al-Fatiha. This is just the five daily prayers, brothers. We live in a world where data is very powerful. Data is what makes us understand things. How many likes you've got, how many followers you have, how many, how much, and for example, money you've got in your account is about data. Have we ever thought about the data of the Salah? This is just like a minuscule of what we can actually try to quantify. Minuscule brothers. Imagine you went to Medina, or you went to Mecca for Umrah or for Hajj, or you have lived there for a while. And imagine you prayed in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam for a whole week, or maybe for a month. You were there and you used to go and pray in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Each prayer that you pray in the Masjid of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will be as if you prayed 1,000 times in this masjid. Imagine you went to Mecca and you prayed in the Kaaba or any masjid within the Haram. That would have been times by 100,000. So every two rak'ah you pray in Mecca, it is as if you have prayed 100,000 times in this masjid. And then that, look at how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
والحسنة بعشر أمثالها الله سبحانه وتعالى will multiply for each حسنة for ten times if he wants it sometimes إلى سبعمائة for seven hundred times look at the generosity of Allah سبحانه وتعالى look at the number of things the, the number of ajr that we can get the quantity the sheer amount of ajr we can get for praying the salah now you under, we come to understand why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was saying just before he died salah salah be mindful of the salah. Remember the salah. Each one of us right now, the brother who's sitting next to you, how much money do you think he has in his account? We don't know. Some of us have got maybe 10 pounds in their account. Maybe some of us, we have 20 pounds. Some of us, maybe we have 100 pounds in our account. Some of us, maybe we, maybe we are in the negative. Overdraft. Some of us, maybe we have thousands in our accounts. Some of us, maybe hundreds of thousands of pounds. We don't know who's, who's got what. When it comes to the account of Al-Akhirah, what about the account of Akhirah? Just imagine maybe the person who sat next to you. Just imagine the brother who's sitting next to you. Maybe he was praying the Salah for the last 20 years. Imagine he was praying the five daily prayers for the last 20 years. How much... And you have not been praying for the last 20 years. When you were able to pray for the last 20 years. How rich is that brother compared to you? How much ajr has he got in his account compared to you? Just think brothers. Do not deprive yourself from this amazing way of acquiring wealth. Which will matter in the hereafter. So my brothers, that is just, I wanted to bring that to your attention. That data, okay? And insha'Allah ta'ala, in the second part of our khutbah bi'idhni Allah ta'ala, we will see how much we are going to miss if we do not pray the voluntary prayers. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum, fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafuru. الحمد لله على إحسانه والشكر له على توفيقه وامتنانه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد. My dear brothers, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said, ما من عبد مسلم يصلي لله تعالى كل يوم ثنت عشرة ركعة تطوعا غير الفريضة إلا بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has said in this hadith. If the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's no Muslim slave who prays 12 rak'ahs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each day voluntarily, apart from the obligatory prayers, but Allah will build for him a house in paradise. Do you know having a house in paradise and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala building a house for you in paradise? What kind of house is it? What is the best house that anyone can have in this world? Nothing compared to what we can get in Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build for you if you pray 12 rak'ahs every day, voluntarily. Every single day you'll have that house in Jannah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to build it for you. What materials will it be built from? What kind of design will it be? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. So the 12 rak'ahs that we talked about, I'll just go over them very quickly. Pray two rak'ah. Someone might be asking, which are these 12 rak'ahs? Pray only two rak'ah before Salatul Fajr. Pray four rak'ahs before Dhuhr. Two rak'ahs after Dhuhr. That, that totals to eight. Two rak'ahs after Maghrib. And two rak'ahs after Isha. So that's the 12 rak'ahs. Do you know if your Muslim brother who's sitting next to you, he prays those 12 rak'ahs, but you don't, how much are you missing out? I'm going to give you the statistics, the data. Today is all about data. Because this is what we understand in the modern day today. We only understand figures. If you don't pray those 12 rak'ahs every single day, and your brother who's sitting next to you does, every single year, this is what you are missing. He's praying 4,380 rak'ahs, which you are not praying. That goes to his account. That's for just one year. That's what you are missing first. Imagine he prays one rak'ah of witr. The witr. So this is one rak'ah that we pray after Salatul Isha. 
or any time during the night before the time of Salat al-Fajr. One rak'ah. So that would mean that brother is kind of like praying 365 rak'ahs of witr every day. I mean every year, which you are missing. Let me just give you the figures in total what you are missing out. For 40 years, if that brother was doing that, he was praying those extra rak'ahs. He was praying, let's say, the 12 rak'ahs, the rawatib. And he prayed two rak'ahs of Salatul Duha. Salatul Duha is the mid-morning prayer. Two rak'ahs. And he also prays one witr, one rak'ah of witr every day. That brother in total, how much is he going to get? This is the number of rak'ahs he, he would have prayed by doing that for 40 years. 79 million. 935,000 rak'ahs, which you haven't prayed. How, what about sujood? The value of sujood. We know the value of sujood, putting your head down on the ground for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot actually quantify that, the value of that. That would have meant 159 million, 159 million, and 80, 870,000 sujood, which you haven't done. That's the gap between that person and that person. So the question now is, do I want to miss out all of that ajr? Yes or no? This now is the choice. You know the statistics right now. You've got the data in front of you, how much ajr you are missing out. How poor you are. Look at your account today. Remind yourself, for the last 10 years, 15 years, I would have been able to, I was able to pray. I knew the salah. But now I haven't done it. For the last 15 years, I'm already running behind. I'm already too late. No, you're never too late, brothers. Do you know the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the number of salah that he prayed is a lot less than that. In a way, the five daily prayers that the Prophet ﷺ has prayed. The five daily prayers were actually made obligatory upon the Prophet ﷺ after 10 years of his prophethood. Just the last 13 years of his life, the Prophet ﷺ was praying five daily prayers. But us as Muslims today, we might have the opportunity to pray a lot more than that. So don't, don't think that khalas, I've missed 10 years of my life. No, remember, many of the companions, they've accepted Islam on a later date, like when they were old and they, they, have been, they have been Muslim maybe for 10 years or five years and then after that they have died. Okay, just remember the quality of the salah you're going to pray. Think about it. So inshallah ta'ala, now you've got the opportunity, the beginning of the year right now. So from today you should say, my brothers, Whatever I've missed before, khalas, no problem. But from today, inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to start doing, make sure that I'm going to pray my five daily prayers. That's the most important thing. The five daily prayers to begin with. Some of us, maybe we only pray Fridays. Some of us, we pray on and off. If you are doing on and off, your account is not going to fill up. Just remember what you are missing. So say, I'm going to start praying my five daily prayers. And that's the, the, the calculations and, and the figures you can get. You, you, you've just heard it. And also, the extra rak'at as well, the extra voluntary prayers. So inshallah ta'ala, you will become multi-billionaire when it comes to ajr. And this is only the salah. I didn't talk about the other pillars of Islam. Did I talk about the shahada? What ajr are we going to get for that? Did I talk about the saum? I didn't talk about fasting. I didn't talk about hajj. I didn't talk about zakah. All the other good deeds you do. This is just one section, one, one of the accounts. Look at how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Whose fault is it now if we don't go to Jannah? Is it our fault or is it Allah's fault? And Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave us the opportunity to go to Jannah. He's saying to you, whatever you do good, I will not only give you a lot of it, I'll actually multiply it for you. And guess what? When we pray the salah, it gets rid of the sins. Inna al-hasanat yudhibna sayyat. That's the beauty. When you pray, your bad deeds will just fall off. Subhanallah. That's how generous Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala This is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah wants us to go to Jannah. There's no reason for us to blame Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and say, it's Allah's fault, I'm not going to go to Jannah. No, it's our own fault. 
Remember that. Inshallah ta'ala. There's so many opportunities to go to Jannah. And inshallah ta'ala, begin with the salah. ta'ala. And if we begin with the salah and we look after our salah, inshallah ta'ala, everything else is going to definitely be okay. Like the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the first thing that will be looked at when it comes to your account of good deeds in the hereafter is going to be the salah. If your salah is not in good shape, definitely now you know why everything else has failed. Because you had so many opportunities to accumulate so much ajr, but you are the one who wasted it. So get that into your head, inshallah ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu, sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid wa barik ala Muhammad wa ala ala Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala ala Ibrahim innaka hamidun majid Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimin Allahumma a'izz al-Islam wa al-Muslimat wa al-Mu'minin wa al-Mu'minat الأحياء منهم والأموات برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنا نسألك الجنة وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ونعوذ بك من النار وما قرب إليها من قول أو عمل ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم يا مصرف القلوب صرف قلوبنا إلى طاعتك إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربة وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون and let me remind you brothers إن شاء الله تعالى صلاة العصر will be at 2.30 today so as soon as we pray and صلاة الجمعة إن شاء الله تعالى you can go home and come back for صلاة العصر at 2.30 بإذن الله تعالى